Hi everyone, welcome back to Rich Reviews. We're here at the Paddle Up Rooms and Paddle Up Rooms have kindly provided us an Alfa Romeo 8C to review. 8C competition guys, an 8C competizione. And we haven't got one, we've got the spider here as well. We're going to be taking one of these cars out for a road test. Which one is it going to be? The coupe or the spider? Let me know in the comments below before you watch the rest of the video which one you think it should be. Keep watching guys, this video is going to be awesome. We're here at the Padlock Rooms in the Cotswold area in Wiltshire. Padlock provide multi-tier car services. Those services include direct car sales, sales through car auctions and car storage facilities. Now, if you're interested in popping over, you can pop over over the weekend. As you can see here, we've got people who are visiting at the weekend. They provide refreshments. And on the top tier in the building, they have car simulators. So you can actually drive off against each other to see who can get the best time. For more information about the Paddle Up Rooms, and we previously visited here and we created some content during that visit, make sure you navigate to that video. I'll drop a link to the video in the description below. story in the HC and the HC competition then we're going to take you for a walk around of the specification of the HC spider that we have here then we're going to take one of these cars out on the road and take you for a drive so the original HC was produced in the 1930s the production run was from 1931 to 1939 and the original HC was very famous for winning Le Mans from 1931 through to 1934 so that's four years successively it was so successful at Le Mans that it was nicknamed the Le Mans. The modern day HC Competizione that you see here was designed by Wolfgang Eger of Alfa Romeo and the styling heralded back to the 1950s Alfa Romeos of old. And when the car was released at the Paris Motor Show in 2006, it was way oversubscribed, over twice oversubscribed. There was only 500 units that were gonna be ever be built of the coupe and more than 1200 people signed up for that car. So it was very, very well received. So the coupe was released in 2006, 2007, and the production run ran until 2010, as they say, only 500 units were created. Now, if we talk about the Spider, the Spider was released in 2009. Now, that was a very different period in our world. There was a downturn in the economy, 
and they were trying to, or they intended to create 500 units of the spider, but in the end, they only provided 329. But the commemorative badge inside actually says 234 of 500 units. So they'd created all the badges, but they only sold 329. So this is actually the rarer car. Now the 8C, the coupe and the spider, are very different to the normal production run cars, such as the Mito and the 4C. Those cars were, were normal production runs, long production run vehicles. These cars are very, very bespoke. They're, there's only 500 units that were made of the coupe, 329 of the Spider. They're a connoisseur's car. You cannot think of them as a normal production run car. They're very special. For example, you cannot compare them to Lamborghini and Ferrari. Those cars are high production runs in relation to this 8C. These 8Cs were set aside very different from a normal Alfa Romeo production runs. You've got to see them very differently. As I said, they're almost like coach built cars. They're very bespoke. And you can see just by looking at the interiors and the exteriors of cars, I mean, look at them. They're bloody gorgeous, absolutely stunning, these cars. Um, and it's gonna be very interesting. It's gonna be really cool to take out one of these cars and drive it and see how it drives on the road. First of all, though, we're talking for a walk around of the Spider and the, and the idiosyncrasies of the car in its design. Now the 8C Spider wasn't called the actual 8C Competizione Spider, but the 8C Spider was built on the platform of the 8C Competizione. So in effect, they, they cut the roof off. The 8C Spider was supported and um, because they cut the roof off, they had to re-engineer the car from the point of view of strengthening it at the rear and strengthening it at the front. When I open up the engine compartment, you'll see that there's a brace across the front, uh, which is provided to add that additional torsional stiffness. As you can see, it's actually a rag top and the specification inside is pretty awesome. As you can see, these seats are beautifully styled. You've got the Alfa Romeo emblem there embossed into the lever. And one of the things that was very interesting about the Alfa Romeo um, is its links with Maserati and its links with Ferrari. Now these are actually Ferrari Enzo bucket seats. They're actually Ferrari Enzo seats. As you can see, they look flipping awesome. And that's why, because there was no money lost and no money spared when these cars were built. The storage area on the Spider is pretty much non-existent in, in the interior of the cabin. You've got some sections down here um, within the door cards that provide you some areas semblance of storage. And you've got the actual fire extinguisher there. The HC Competizione Coupe and Spider, they had a transactional gearbox. They had an engine that was built by Ferrari. So the engines were actually built in the, in the Ferrari production area. And, and they implemented an F1 style robotized gearbox. And they say it was a transactional, so the, so the gearbox was interlinked and amalgamated in with the axle at the rear of the car. Now that was to provide a better balance so that the cars were very balanced for better weight distribution. We open up the engine compartment. Now that is very light. The, en the, engine, the engine lid is very, very light. As you see, you've got the Alfa Romeo badge V8 and you've got the strut across the top of the engine. Now the specifications of this engine, for, or the specifications for the Coupe and for the Spider, are a 4.7 litre, 450 brake horsepower, with 346 pound foot of torque. As I say, this engine was built in the Ferrari factory, but it's a cross-plane crank. It's, most Ferraris have what's called a flat-plane crank, and that's how you get that howl at the top end. A cross-plane crank is more in the design of like the American, the big American V8s. So you have that burble, which you'll hear when we fire up the car, you have that V8 burble, that low-end burble, and that low-end torque, which sounds absolutely bloody awesome on these cars, to be honest, guys. Now, I detailed that the engine cover is very light. There's a good reason for that. The structure of these cars is they had a steel chassis, but all the body panels are carbon fiber, except the front bumper and rear bumper. Both of those are resin polycarbonate. Now the spider mechanism of this car and the additional bracing provides an only an additional 90 kilograms above the weight of the coupe. Now, how did they resolve a lot of that weight? As opposed to the coupe having steel disc rotors for the brakes, the spider has carbon fiber ceramic discs that reduce the weight substantially so it's aluminium calipers which are both the same for the spider and the coupe but it has carbon ceramic discs now moving around to the back we talk about the storage ability of these cars as i said inside on the spider there's very little storage capability the coupe is different we'll talk you through that in a minute lifting up the rear tailgate here lifting up the rear rear trunk you're not really going to get much in there guys you can get an overnight bag in there but you're not really gonna get that much, but that's not what these cars were designed for. As I say, coach-built connoisseur's car, you have to keep that in mind. They weren't a normal production run Alfa Romeo. These are very special cars. 
Now referencing the HC Competizione, you can see that the storage capability is a lot better because it's got a hard roof. You can see here you've got storage capability, substantial storage capability for, for um, GT touring facilities. You can put all your luggage in the back here. This is room that you do not have in the spider due to the spider mechanism, the spider roof mechanism. If you look here, you've got these beautiful carbon back Enzo bucket seats, similar design to the spider. You have this, whereas you can actually put this seat back at multiple different positions. Alfa Romeo embossment, the commemorative badge here, as you see, it doesn't say which number car this is, as opposed to the Spider, where it actually has the cars actually numbered. Here you've got 500 limited edition. But again, a very beautiful place to be in the interior of this car. Good old paddle, aluminium paddle shifts here, not carbon fiber. They actually feel a lot better being aluminium too as well. Now coming around to the back, we open up the rear hatchback and unlike the Spider, you don't have a fixed boot. You have this little compartment, you have a tonneau cover and you have this little compartment and <laughs> this is your storage capability guys in the, in the back of the coupe. You have bespoke luggage, very beautifully designed and very beautifully built there with the Alfa Romeo logo. And you can probably get some overnight bits and pieces in there, but you're not, not going to get much in there. The main area for storage for the coupe is behind the seats in that bespoke storage located area. Now the HC Spider here is for sale at Paddle App. So if you're interested in purchasing this car, make sure you navigate to their website and check out the, spec the full specification of this beautiful HC Spider. Very, very rare car. So say only 329 were made and this is numbered number 234. This is the only 8C Spider on Auto Trader that's available at the moment. I believe some other cars available um, on one of the German websites or on some German websites, but this is the only one that's available in the UK. Only 35 of these cars were provided to the UK. So very, very small numbers, very, very special connoisseurs car. While we're here with the 8C Spider, I just want to talk through some of the spec options that were provided for this particular car. It's got the Alpha Red, original Alfa Romeo racing color so that's bespoke to this particular car Tierra di Siena frail grain leather interior cream leather stitching backrest partition and center console leather upholstery perforated design dark shining silver alloy wheels yellow painted calipers um, the clover leaf what they call the lucky clover leaf badges now those aren't badges that are like the Ferrari side badges these are actually painted on they're underneath the lacquer so those are fixed painted on badges which is very cool if you look at the design of the car side, passenger side aluminium footrest leather finished finished roll hoops and a 500 limited badge a Bose hi-fi system as well which was over two and a half grand just for the Bose hi-fi system pictogram navigation system floor mats and fire extinguisher but if you want to see this in in great detail and if you want to see the details of this spider make sure you navigate to the paddle up website guys this is a very very special car make sure you at least go to their website and take a look now, we're gonna take one of these cars out and take you for a test drive. So thanks again to Paddle Up for allowing us to review both of these stunning, beautiful cars and for allowing us to take out the HC Coupe for a test drive. So you join me now, guys, driving the HC Competizione Coupe. Key in the ignition, foot on the brake, and you press the big silver start button. Listen to that. So the HC Competizione, 4.7 litre, 450 brake horsepower, 346 pound foot of torque. Now that 346 pound foot of torque is delivered very low in the rev range from 2000 RPM upwards. So 80% of that 346 pound foot of torque is delivered from 2000 RPM upwards. That makes it a very torquey engine, hence you know, this is the sort of configuration, the sort of power, power delivery you get with a cross-plane crank engine, much like the, the muscle cars, the American muscle cars of old. And you can see it here, it sounds incredible, it sounds absolutely bloody awesome. So first impressions. The steering, a lot of people have mentioned this before, I know, but the steering isn't as light as you'd expect it to be, but it's well weighted, it's very well weighted. The, the build quality of the interior is exceptional. It's a beautiful car. It's again, heralding back to that old style coach build type of configurations, coach build type of build quality. 
The dash is actually carbon fiber. There's no lever on the dash. The steering is very, very nice in its design. Feels great to the hand and it's leather in its, in its design. The paddle shifts are aluminium. They're not carbon fiber, they're aluminium, which feel really good. The headlights and the indicators are configured and switched on and off by good old fashioned steering column stalks, which is great to see. And very different to the, to the uh, modern day Ferraris. And the steering wheel, as you can see, is bereft of all the buttons. This was before the time of everything going on the steering wheel, all the buttons going on the steering wheel. I know this isn't a Ferrari, um, but even more, mo even modern cars, um, even non-Ferrari modern cars, tend to move a lot, of, a lot of the controls to the steering wheel nowadays. The brakes on this coupe as well are steel, not carbon ceramic. The Spyder has the carbon ceramic disc as standard. The coupe has steel rotors and the brakes are very good to be honest you know they, they, they feel very performant they feel fine so we're just going to pop it into sport mode now so you should hear the exhaust latency with a single plate clutch that's to be expected as I said before it's a very old design get a nice rev match in as well when I drop it down it's great that they didn't bring across the Maserati Skyhook air suspension onto these onto these eight C's I know that that was an option but thankfully they didn't they put good old-fashioned dual wishbone suspension on these cars and, and it's very much the better for it as well. The car feels very solid, very well planted on the road. Very, it's like I've got a Porsche solidity to it. You've got pretty good visibility inside the car as well. The A pillars are quite thick, so that removes a slight bit of visibility when you're looking to the left and right. But in general, the visibility is very good. I'm lifting off slightly when I'm changing gear. I find that's, it's, that that's more beneficial and gives you a, a more speedy gear change. The suspension is quite firm, uh, but it gives you again that solid feel on the road. Obviously, it's it's um, a high performance um, sports car. You can't really call it a supercar, but a high performance sports car. So you'd expect the suspension to be quite firm, especially on these bumpy A-type roads, country A-type roads. But even though these roads are quite bad, you're not you are feeling the road but you're not feeling the undulations in the road too aggressively so the suspension is soaking up some of the pitfalls of the road so again the steering is quite heavy when you're moving at low speeds but when the speed picks up it becomes very maneuverable that gives you a good solid feel about the car again seconds in the coupe in a spider it's 4.4 seconds now that was rather optimistic it's, it's a very performant car but really that 4.2 seconds probably you need, you need a good you need a good wind behind you and everything and, and all the conditions pretty much perfect to be able to provide that 4.2 that was the production metrics that they provided that was the that was the production performance figures Top speed is around 181 miles per hour. Any latency you feel in the gearbox is totally overshadowed by that bloody sound of that V8. Sounds absolutely awesome, that 4.7, 450 brake horsepower V8. Now the coupes, even though lighter than the Spider, is still 1500 odd kilograms. So it's still quite a heavy car, probably due to that, and that would be down to the build quality. The Spider is around 90 kilograms heavier. So, it, when you compare it to, although you shouldn't do a comparison with the, with the 458, but the 458 is around the same way. And the 458 has a 4.5 litre um, V8, which produces 560 brake horsepower, and at least produces 450 brake horsepower.
of the HC Competizione. The single plate clutch gearbox is slow. And in, with regards to modern day times, it's definitely slow. But you can get past that with regards to the performance of the car and the way it sounds. The car feels a little bit heavy on the road as well, but again, that's the build quality of the car. It's more of a connoisseur's coach-built car. So we've had to change camera now, guys, because unfortunately the GoPro, I think it's a version 10, GoPro Hero 10, has timed out because it's got too bleeding hot because uh, it's a very hot day today. I'm just driving it now gently, just blipping through the gears. The gearbox is fine. There's no issues at all with its latency. Um, the performance as I, when I was pushing on, going around corners was fine. It was planted on the road. No issues whatsoever. Yes, the car feels a little bit heavier. Heavier. It feels like an old style, um, solidly built 911 in that respect. Probably a lot of that heaviness comes from the steering. The steering is quite heavy when you're at slower speeds, um, but it, it picks up and becomes a lot more agile as you get as you get moving on. it a bit steady these cars a lot of it is how it makes you feel and if I was to sum that up it makes me feel good this is a fantastic car to drive and you've got you know in a different way in like a connoisseur style way you've got that that classic interior feel about it um, and the classic build quality solid build quality that solidity around you makes you feel safe when you're driving it it's very small as well the car shrinks around you this isn't a big car guys it may be 1500 kilograms which isn't super heavy but it, it probably is fairly heavy for for the type of car that it is but that's the build quality it's a lovely car to drive i could see you know notwithstanding obviously the storage space although in the coupe you have got that storage space behind the seats so you could take this is a this is, this could be classed as a gt from the respect of taking on a touring trip and i think this is well suited around the riviera you know taking it around france monaco etc um taking it to those areas around the the, the amalfi coast um be fantastic this car driving those areas in this sort of weather um, be a stunning car to take and this style of car the way it's styled is very befitting, befitting for that sort of area I can tell you for one thing guys you certainly wouldn't get the hassle that you get in modern day Ferrari supercars um, that you know much that I get in my 458 Spider. you certainly wouldn't get that hassle this car isn't going to attract that sort of attention it's going to attract smiles people are going to smile and they're going to love the styling of this car not you know notwithstanding a lot of people don't understand what an HC is when they see it they think of it as being a different type of Mito or 4C and as I said earlier it isn't it's almost a coach built car only 500 units of these ever made I know I keep banging on about that but it's so important to realize that and to appreciate that so yeah you've got the negativity of the single plate clutch they're only left-hand drive models ever made of this car so it's a bit tricky to drive um, in the UK if you're used to right and drive cars as I am um, it feels heavy especially at lower speeds that provides you the strength and rigidity from the build quality that that affords that is a bloody brilliant place to stop just after a left turn in what a clown the woman's on a freaking phone would you believe it guys she stopped just after a left turning and she's on her phone unbelievable But the positives are the build quality, the styling, yes, the performance. This is a, this is a great performance car for the type of styling. The size of the car is very nimble and very easy to park and very easy to maneuver because of its size. And as I said, this car would be really at home on the Amalfi Coast and in, on the French Riviera. Perfect car to drive in those locations. We're just pulling back into Paddle Up now. And uh, 
I feel a sense of sadness that I have to give the car back so early, to be honest with you. I'd love to um, carry on driving this car. So guys, that's the 8C Competizione Coupe. My opinion, I bloody love it. I've, I've, fallen, I've fallen in love with this car driving it. I wish I could have spent a lot more time with it. This would be great in on the French Riviera. Thanks a lot again to Paddle Up for letting us review this 8C Coupe and for bringing out the 8C Spider again so we, can, so we can review them alongside. Very much appreciated. Please make sure you give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. If you're not subscribed, please make sure you subscribe. It doesn't cost you anything to do so. You can unsubscribe at any time. Thanks a lot for watching guys and make sure you catch us in the next video.